Today, we will delve into the mysterious and controversial world of the Rorschach test. This psychological tool, often portrayed in pop culture, has been the subject of both praise and criticism in the psychological community. It is often misunderstood by the public, making it a fascinating topic for us to explore together. Let's begin by looking back at its origins. The Rorschach test was developed by Swiss psychiatrist Hermann Rorschach in the early 20th century, specifically in 1921. Fascinated by children's fondness for inkblot games, Rorschach began experimenting with symmetrical inkblots, exploring their use in assessing an individual's personality and mental state. His tests initially included 15 inkblots, but was later reduced to 10, which are still used today. The reliability and validity of the Rorschach test have been debated amongst psychologists for decades. For a test to be considered reliable, it needs to produce consistent results across different situations, raters, and over time. A valid test accurately measures what it purports to measure. In terms of reliability, the Rorschach test has shown mixed results. Some studies have found a high degree of inter-rater reliability, meaning different psychologists observing the same test often reach similar conclusions. However, other studies have found less consistency, particularly when the test is administered to the same person at different times. Concerning validity, the Rorschach test has also been a contentious subject. Some psychologists argue that the test can provide valuable insight into unconscious thought processes and personal characteristics, making it a valid tool for certain assessments. Others, however, argue that the interpretive nature of the test lacks a standardized objective measurement, compromising its validity. The main criticisms of the Rorschach test focus on its scientific grounding and interpretive subjectivity. The scientific community values replicability, standardization, and rigorous statistical analysis, and many believe the Rorschach test falls short in these areas. Critics argue that the interpretation of results relies heavily on the skills and perspectives of the individual administering the test, making it too subjective and inconsistent. They suggest the test might better serve as a therapeutic tool for promoting self-reflection, rather than a diagnostic tool with defined interpretations. The Ten Plates and Interpretations The Rorschach test consists of ten inkblots, five black and white, two black and red, and three multicolored. Each holds symbolic significance and is intended to evoke different reactions. Why color? Color, or its absence, can prompt different emotional responses. Black and white images might elicit more straightforward, concrete thoughts, while colored blots could encourage emotional and creative responses. It's important to note that interpretations are individualistic, complex, and context-dependent, making it impossible to provide a definitive guide for understanding each plate. It's important to remember that this test relies heavily on interpretation and the context of the individual's overall responses. And the following interpretations are general guidelines. Actual interpretation of a person's response could be quite different based on other factors, such as their personal experiences, cultural background, current mental state, and other responses within the test. Plate 1. Mostly black and white with hints of red. This is the introductory plate, generally the easiest for individuals to interpret and provides an initial assessment of one's perception and imagination. It often evokes immediate reactions like bat, butterfly, or moth. This plate measures the subject's approach to the task environment, and the quality of the form of their responses. Plate 2, predominantly black and white with a touch of red. This plate can trigger emotional responses due to the addition of color, particularly the color red, often associated with strong emotions. It is often seen as two humans or an animal's anatomy. The addition of red may evoke emotional responses, and the examiner could look for indications of how the individual handles emotional stimuli. Plate 3, this plate aims to assess how an individual reacts to and copes with emotional stimuli. This is a multicolored blot, often seen as two humans. It assesses the subject's reaction to and handling of emotional stimuli from interpersonal sources. Plate 4, a large black and white blot. Some might see it as a big animal skin or a hide. This is often considered the father figure plate due to its imposing larger design and may bring up issues of authority or control. It also assesses problem-solving abilities and potential stress areas. 
Plate 5. This black and white ink blot is often seen as a bat, butterfly, or moth similar to Plate 1. This plate is usually the fastest to answer due to its simplicity, and it acts as a transition to the second half of the test, serving as a form of stress relief after the more challenging Plate 4. Plate 6. This blot, black and white, often provokes a variety of responses due to its more abstract design and it can give insight into a subject's imaginative processes. It can be seen as a submarine or a musical instrument. This plate often elicits a variety of responses due to its ambiguous design, and can provide insight into an individual's imaginative capabilities. Plate 7. Another black and white ink blot, which is often associated with softer, gentler responses such as a woman's head or a face in profile. It is said to assess one's ability to handle emotional and stressful situations, as well as the possibility of introspective tendencies. This plate is often associated with introspection and an individual's ability to manage stress. Plate 8. This is a multicolored blot with many intricate parts. It can be seen as various animals or trees, assessing one's handling of complex emotional stimuli. This plate often probes for creativity and abstract thinking. This plate encourages creative abstract thinking due to its diverse colors and complex design. Plate 9. A multicolored blot that may be seen as animals, humans, or natural phenomena. The variety of potential responses here can reflect flexibility or rigidity in thought processes. The complexity of this plate can prompt a variety of interpretations reflecting an individual's flexibility in thought processes. Plate 10. This is the final blot full of vibrant colors and complex patterns. It often triggers the most diverse and creative responses, like a large tree, a map, or a sea creature. The complexity of this blot can assess how a person integrates and reacts to complex stimuli. This plate often elicits the most complex and diverse responses due to its intricate design and vibrant colors, assessing an individual's ability to manage and integrate complex stimuli. Remember, these are general guidelines, and real interpretation involves a nuanced understanding of the individual's total response pattern. In conclusion, the Rorschach test is an intriguing tool shrouded in controversy and misunderstanding. Its history, use, and the debate surrounding its reliability and validity remind us that psychology, like any science, is a dynamic field, subject to ongoing debate and refinement. Today's exploration of the test, its 10 plates, and its reception in the scientific community hopefully illuminates its complexities and offers a deeper understanding of this fascinating psychological instrument. So, what's my personal take on the Rorschach test? I think that it is too subjective to be useful in research and shouldn't be relied upon much clinically. The objective evidence base for its utility and validity just isn't there. If you found this interesting, hit the like and subscribe buttons and share this video with others. It really helps the channel. Let me know what you think in the comments section and, until we meet again, take care of yourselves and stay safe.